So now that we have Go installed and Visual Studio Code configured, let's start working on our backend application. And we'll start with a really simple version of it, which will improve as time goes on. So I have Visual Studio Code open, and I have an empty window here with no folder open. So let me close this and open a folder. And I'll create a folder in Visual Studio Code Projects, and I'll just call it backend-app. And I'll open this folder. Now, because we're starting this as a modern Go application, we're going to use Go modules. So I open my terminal in Visual Studio Code, and I type Go mod in it, and I can call it whatever I want, but I'll just call it backend, which is sufficient for our purposes. And that creates, as you can see over here, a Go mod file. Now I'm going to create a folder to hold the main part of my application. And the convention for a lot of people, myself included, is to create a folder at the root level of your app called CMD, and then inside of that, create a folder, because we're writing a REST API, I'm going to create an API folder. If this was a standard web application, I would probably call that folder web, but I'll call it API. And inside of the API folder, I'll create a main.go file. And there's our main.go file, so it requires a package declaration, and I'll just call it main. And the very first thing I'll do is define a constant. And I'm a, this is going to be a constant that just keeps track of the version of our application, which we'll send back as part of our response in certain cases. And that will be equal to 1.0.0, just a string. Okay. The second thing I'll do is create a type, and I'm going to call this config, and it will hold the application config. And it's just a struct. It's a type struct, and it has two members, port, which is an int, what port will our application listen on, and I'll call this one on, and it'll just be a string, and it's the application environment. So it'll be something like development, or production, or staging, whatever it may be. But I'm going to use that as so I can pass information around to the various parts of my application. Now I'll create my main function, func main, and we'll make a really simple one. So right away, I'll create a variable called cfg, which is of type config, which we defined just up there on line 5. And now I'm going to assume that when I start this application, I'll be reading things like the port and the environment from the command line as a flag passed to the application. So I'll use the built-in flag package, which is part of Go. And I'll first of all, I'll read for an int. So I'll find the eyes right here. I'll just type int, int var. That's the one I'm looking for. So I'm going to read from the command line some integer value, and I will store it in my config variable that I just created in the member port. And it's going to be called port on the command line. That's the flag we'll be passing. I'll give it a default value of, say, 4,000. OK, that's the port we're going to be listening on. And a description, server port to listen on. This way, I don't need to specify a command line a flag of 4,000. That will be the default. And that's what we'll use for development. Now, flag. Let's get a string var. And this will give me my environment, which I'll read into cfg and dot onv. And the flag will be onv. And the default will be development. And we'll give it a description. Uh, application environment. And we'll say the default. So that you should choose either development or production. We'll just go with two for now. OK? And now that I have those defined, of course, I have to parse the flags, flag.parse. And if you've done any work with Go, you've almost certainly encountered that. Now we'll just say format.println, just to make sure everything is working, running. So I'll open my command line, and now I want to execute this. So I can just type, because I'm in the root level of my application, go run cmd slash api slash main dot go. And it should just print running to the window and exit. And it does. OK, so that works. No errors so far. Now we actually want to serve some information. I, all I want to accomplish this time around is just to get a basic web server running and serve some kind of JSON content to the browser. OK, so we'll make this as simple as we possibly can. So I'll create an HTTP dot handler func, a handler function. And this is a function that will listen for specific URLs passed to our server. So it requires a few arguments. The first one it requires is, a, is the path it's going to listen to. And I'll just make it slash status for now. 
and then it requires a handler func. Well, I can inline that. So we'll just say func, and it requires the argument of wHttp.responseWriter, as all handlers do, and r is a pointer to http.request. And inside of that, all I really want to do, apparently I'm missing something here. Ah, I have an R here. HTTP handle func. That's better. Okay. So what I'm going to do here now, just to make sure this actually works, is just say format.fprint. I'll just print right to my response writer W, and I'll just give it status, just to make sure this actually works. Okay. And now below that, let's start a web server. So error is assigned the value of http.listen and serve. And we're going to listen to the port that was passed to us. So I can use format.sprintf because it expects a string. And I'll give it the colon it wants, then an integer value. And in that I'll put cfg.port. And the second argument, I'll just hand it nil because I'm not passing any data to it. And we'll check for the error. If error is not equal to nil, log.println error. Okay, so now I should be able to run this, open a web browser, and go to localhost port 4000 slash status. So let's try it. Go run cmd slash api slash main.go. Okay, so it's running. So let's go to a web browser. And let's go to localhost 4000 slash status. Okay, so it's working. Now, unfortunately, that's just plain text. And what I actually want to send is JSON. So let's go back to our web, or to our IDE and stop our web server by hitting control C. I'll close this. And let's make this a little more useful. And this is just a starting point. We're going to be changing this. First thing I'll do is create a type up here because I want to actually send some formatted JSON about the current status of the server to whoever requested it. So I'll create a type, which I'll call app status, and it's a struct, and it has a few members. And what I'm going to put in there, first of all, is status, and that will be a string, okay? And then I'll put in environment, and that will also be a string, and version which will also be a string. And you will notice that I exported all of these members. They begin with a capital letter. And you need to do that. Now I'll format this. Okay. And down here in my handle func, I'll get rid of this line because I'm not going to use that anymore. I want to return some JSON. So what I'm going to do is create a variable called current status. And it is of type app status. And I'll populate its members as follows. Status, I'll just make it available, a string. And environment, I can read that right from my config variable, cfg.env. And finally, version, well, that can come from the constant version that I defined way up on line 10. Okay, so I have this variable defined, and it has those three members in it. Now I want to convert that variable, which is a struct, into JSON. And I'm going to do that by calling json.marshallindent. Okay? So the result will be stored in a variable called js. I will check for an error. And I'll call from the built-in package in the standard library, json.marshallindent. Now, this is the one we'd be using in production. This is the one that we're using right now because it's more readable. So marshallindent, it requires a few arguments. First of all, what do you want to convert into json? Well, that's current status. And do you want to have any kind of prefix? Nope, an empty string is good. And how much do you want to indent it? I'll just indent it one tab by using backslash t. Then I'll check for an error. If error is not equal to nil, and all I'll do right now is log.println the error. Otherwise, I want to write that JS right to the browser as JSON. So I already have it in JSON format. It's stored in the variable JS. But I need to set the header, w.header.set, and I want to set the content-type with a capital C and a capital T, just like that, to application JSON. And I also want to send some kind of status. And the, because this, I'm assuming this is going to work, I'll just write the header. And what I'm going to write is http.statusok. Okay. 
which is 200, an integer. And that's a built-in constant in the HTTP package. And now I just write my JS right to my response writer, w.write.js. Okay, so let's try this again. Let's run our application. Go run cmd api main.go. And it's running. Let's go back to our web browser and just reload this page. And now I'm using Firefox, so I get a nicely formatted representation of the content of that JSON. But if I click on raw data, you'll see it actually is a JSON file. But I don't really like the status environment and version to begin with capital letters. I want, the, I want those to be lowercase letters. Well, how am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to go back to my JSON here and then switch back to my IDE. And what I'm going to do is stop this. Okay. And back up here where I defined app status, I'm going to give some extra information to each of these. In backticks, I'll say when you're rendering this as JSON, J S O N, colon, then in double quotes, call this status. And for the next line, when you're rendering this as JSON, in quotes, double quotes, I'll call it environment with a lowercase e and close that double quote, which is something I always forget to do. And finally, for the last one, when you're rendering this as JSON, colon, double quotes, version. Okay, let's run our application again and go back to our web browser and reload this page. And now you'll see that everything looks much nicer. And that's how I control what's going to show up in this JSON feed. Now, there's a couple of other things you can do when you're rendering JSON this way, but when we go a little bit further, we'll cover those. But for right now, we have successfully created one path, which is slash status, that's handled by this handler func, and we've actually returned a response as valid JSON. So, it's a good start. Now, clearly, there's a lot more to do, but we'll get started on that in the next lecture.